Week 3, the Relational Database Model. Course Objectives. In this presentation, you will learn how to examine how data redundancy is handled in the Relational Database Model, and examine how relationships between entities are defined, refined, and incorporated into the database design process. The relational database model is the current standard for database modeling. In the relational database model, data is represented in tables. Tables are connected to each other through relationships built on fields. Relational database models enable logical representation of the data and its relationships. Its logical simplicity yields simple and effective database design methodologies and is facilitated by the creation of data relationships based on a logical construct called a relation. The Entity Relationship Model, ERM, is a common tool used to represent the Relationship Database Model. The Entity Relationship Model allows the database to be presented visually for different groups of users, including database designers, programmers, and end users. There are a number of modeling notation options in the ERM, including CHINS, Crow's Foot, IDE F1X, and UML. Crow's Foot is the most commonly used and is named for its three-pronged arrow which resembles a bird's foot. The ERM represents the entities, attributes, relationships, and constraints of the database needed to support the user requirements. An entity is a unique and distinct object used to collect and store data. Attributes are characteristics of entities. Relationships are connections or associations between database entities. And constraints are restrictions imposed upon the data. An integral part of the relational database model is the entity. An entity is a collection of similar objects which may eventually translate into a database table. In this example, customers is the entity. Attributes are characteristics of entities. Attributes may eventually translate into fields in database tables. In this example, customer ID, customer first name, customer last name, and customer email are attributes of the customer's entity. The table representation may also include characteristics of attributes such as data types and keys. Relationships are connections or associations between database tables. A relationship matches data in fields, usually a field with the same or a similar name. There are three types of relationships a one-to-one, -one, a one-to-many, or a many-to-many. -many. In a one-to-one -one relationship, each row of one table is associated to exactly one row in another table. The number of rows in each table will be the same. 
The one-to-one -one relationship is rarely used because the tables can be merged into one larger table to achieve the same result. The benefit of the one-to-one -one relationship is to improve performance of the database. If a query is performed on the whole table, a one-to-one -one relationship permits a smaller table and quicker query performance. In this example, all of the customers for a business are stored in a customer's table, and all of the customer's tax information is stored in the customer tax table. A one-to-one -one relationship is denoted between the customers and the customer tax table. In a one-to-many relationship, each row of one table is associated with many rows of another table. The ERM describes this relationship as 1 colon M. For example, all of the customers for a business is stored in a customer's table, while all of the customer orders are stored in an orders table. Each customer can have many orders, but each order can only be associated with a single customer. Note the three-pronged crow's foot on the order side of the relationship. The many-to-many -many relationship is an indirect relationship requiring a third table called a mapping table. The ERM describes this relationship as M colon N. One or more rows in one table is associated with zero one or more rows in another table through the mapping table. For example, all customers for a business are stored in a customer's table, while all of the products are stored in a product's table. Each customer can have many products, and each product can be assigned to many customers. Note the three-pronged crow's foot on both the customers and the product side of the relationship. This example demonstrates the use of the mapping table in a many-to-many -many relationship. The many-to-many -many relationship between student and class is an indirect relationship requiring a third table named Enroll. The ERM describes this relationship as M colon N, many-to-many. Each student can have many classes, and each class can be assigned to many students. This is achieved through the mapping table named Enroll. Another important element in the ERM model, constraints are restrictions imposed on the data. Constraints include making data mandatory, and requiring unique values. Constraints also include establishment of the primary key and indexes. The primary key is an attribute that uniquely identifies a table. Establishing attributes as indexes will improve performance of queries. Fields that may be used frequently as search fields can be selected as index constraints. Selecting keys is an important consideration in database modeling and design. A primary key is a field or a combination of fields that uniquely identifies a table and establishes the relationships between tables. For example, a customer ID field may serve as the primary key for a customer table.
A table may have other unique attributes that could potentially serve as the primary key. These are called candidate keys. If a candidate key is not selected as the primary key, it is considered a secondary key. In our earlier example, the customer ID field was selected as a primary key for the customer table. The customer table may also include a customer email address field that could potentially serve as the primary key because of its uniqueness. The email address is a candidate key. Because the email address may be blank and may change, the email address was not selected as the primary key. Therefore, email address may serve as a secondary key. A foreign key is used in a relationship between tables. A foreign key is a primary key in another table. Consider two tables, customer and invoice. Each invoice is assigned to one customer. One customer may have many invoices. A one-to-many relationship exists between customer and invoice. The primary key in the customer table is customer code. The primary key in the invoice table is invoice number. Note a customer code field also exists in the invoice table. This creates the relationship between customer and invoice. The customer code field in the invoice table is the foreign key. A composite key is a multi-key field. Two or more fields are combined to create the unique value required for the key. Composite keys are frequently used in the mapping table of a many-to-many -many relationship. For example, all customers for a business might be stored in a customer table with a key field of customer ID and all products stored in a product table with a key field of product ID. Each customer can have many products and each product can be assigned to many customers. A mapping table could be an orders table with a composite key of both the customer ID field and the product ID field creating a composite key. The database demonstration will use Microsoft Access to demonstrate the concepts shown in this chapter. In this demonstration, I will use Microsoft Access to add tables, fields, keys, and relationships to a database. My demonstration database, I've already created an employee table and a store table. I'm now going to add a region table. I'm going to click on Create, Table. You can create your fields from Datasheet view. I prefer to create them from Design view. Click on Design view. It wants to give a name to the table. I'm going to call mine Region and OK. Access has already created a key field. Note the key to the left of the field name of a data type auto number. You can keep this or you can override it if you have a different field in mind. Add your fields 
choose your data types, add any constraints or properties down below, and then close when you have finished establishing your fields in your table. My employee table, let's take a look at it. I'm going to go to the design view of my employee table. I'm going to add a primary key. I'm going to click on my employee code and click on the primary key button and my key has been added. Again, I could add any constraints to my properties here and close when finished. I go to my store table, design view. I'm going to add a key to my store table by clicking to the left of my store code and then clicking on the primary key button on the toolbar and the key picture appears. I'm going to close that. I do want to go to the relationships view so I'm going to go to design view of my table and then to relationships here. By clicking on show table on the toolbar a list of my tables appears. I'm going to add my notice I have my store and employee table already I'm going to add my new region table and choose add and then close the show table dialog box. Now I'm going to establish a relationship. Each store has many employees. So I'm going to add a one to many relationship between store and employees. So I'm going to drag my store code from store to employees. The edit relationships dialog box pops up immediately and it has established a one to many relationship for me. I could change my join type here if I needed to. And I'm going to click on create. Now to change this to one to many, I need to add enforce referential integrity and choose OK. And now I see my one to many representation of my relationship. These concepts will assist you with your assignment for this week.